All right. Well, I don't know whether the lambs are in focus, but um, I think we're all set. All right. So this is a history, uh, presumably brief, of Alliston. Uh, I have spent the last um, few years, I belong to the historical society. They've always talked about writing a book. And everybody thought you could just sit down and do it. And I tried giving it a start after I retired. And every time I read a story, I had found three other versions. And you're probably familiar with local history, having many, yeah. many versions. That's right. I'm going to just move that. Sure. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Um, so I started reading Alice and Harold's on microfilm. And then the more I read, the more I realized I was learning. They started in 1871. There was only about 25 up until 1900, because every time there was a fire, papers disappeared. Um, however, at the end result, I went from 1871 to 1991, and I read 4,000 Alliston Heralds on microfilm, and I will never use a microfilm machine again. <laughs> so I've gained a lot of information, some that isn't really known in the town. So here we go. Some of it I knew before, and some of it's new. This is the Fletcher House. William Fletcher came from Yorkshire. He farmed on Concession 3, uh, Lot 14, in Tecumseh Township for 20 years, from about 1826 to 1846, 47. Then he and his three sons came up to Alliston. We are surmising that uh, his wife's brother farmed around Alliston, Mr. McGurr, and that there was a real problem with a lack of a grist mill in the area. And we, we are making the assumption at this point that he came to Alliston to set up a milling business. So he came in 1847, lived in a little cabin on Main Street in Alliston. And the following year, his wife joined him. Um, the first thing they did was build a sawmill. Then they built a house. This is the Fletcher House on Fletcher Crescent, which is the hospital street in Alliston. Uh, it looks slightly different today. That photo was taken a few years ago. Um, and the original house, looked a little something like that, not as large either, but that's the, late, the earliest photo we have of it. They built it in 1849. They followed it by building a dam and creating a mill pond so they could power a, a mill. So I'm going to take you over to King Street, which is uh, the Dairy Queen Road, the one that goes into Riverdale Park, and you're looking east along the Mighty Boyne. And they decided that when they came here, they could mill because they could provide water power. And after they dammed the Boyne, this, was a, this is a photo that was taken about 1920. But that's what it would look like in Alliston. The, I'm just going to wander around here a bit. The, this is the hospital hill. This is the house next to the hospital, east, if you, can, if you know directions. And uh, this is the town hall. That, that's the town hall where the town hall is today. It doesn't look like that, but that's where it, it's in the same place. And that, the, this photo is taken at the bottom of the hospital hill looking west. And the bridge in the background is the King Street Bridge. So that's what the mighty Boyne looked like when it got backed up. And it was beautiful. The mill pond was there until 1942. And on March 17th, the ice and everything came floating down the river and took out the dam, and it was never rebuilt. Um, through much anguish, the town fathers often tried to get it rebuilt, and they could decide they couldn't. Um, but anyway, anyway, it was a beautiful place. This is the um, bottom of the hospital hill, looking southeast. This is the pedestrian bridge. I presume people are aware of it. Uh, that was where the dam was. And the mill was just downriver. Um, that brick house wasn't there then. I happened to live in it. <laughs> and I live in the house I was raised in. And my grandfather, who came to Alliston about 1912, um, I was born in 46, and I have a twin brother. And he wanted the twins to grow up across the road from him. So he reclaimed all the bricks and built our house. <laughs> and that's the one I live in today. This is what it looked like below the dam. Uh, they're fishing. I don't know what time of year it is, whether it's summer. There were all kinds of fish that came up the Nautilusaga, uh, as far as Nicholson, and then up the Boyne River. Um, the, the hospital hill would be up right at the top of the, of the photograph. 
This is the mill that was built in 1853 by a gentleman named Alex Grant. He had been hired, as far as we can determine, to build the mill because we don't think the Fletchers knew how to mill. They just decided it would be a good idea. So they built the mill, and this is located, I don't know how clear this is, the hospital hill is in the far corner. You can see the mill pond. The bridge um, over there on the left side is basically where the footbridge is today and, the, and, the, and uh, what, what's left of it, uh, what's, what's there today. These are all uh, piles of logs that would have been stacked up for the sawmill, which was just downriver, not very far, and there were two mill wheels, one to power the sawmill and one to power the mill. Uh, the mill burned in 1911 and was never rebuilt. Now, Alex Grant was provided with a house. This is Burns, where Burns Flowers is today, if, you know, for those of you who are familiar with the main street of town. Just um, west of Paris Street, uh, Mill Pond Cafe, the Mill Pond building, uh, just down there. Um, Alex Grant, uh, his wife, had several children, and you can trace where he was building mills by the birthplace of all his children. The first white girl born in Alliston was uh, Margaret Grant. And then she went off with her family, obviously, and they traveled all around, and he eventually settled in Thompsonville. And lo and behold, in Thompsonville, John Banting was farming, and his son William met Margaret, and they got married, and their last born child was Frederick Banting, Sir. Sir Frederick Banting, the discoverer of insulin. So it all started in this little place in Alice. Uh, a fellow, a gentleman named Mint Story, eventually owned the building. And his sons have the remains of this house. And uh, it's, uh, it was offered to the town in the 50s, and nobody wanted it, and so it's gone, among many other buildings. Um, the Fletchers had built their house in 19, 1849, the mill in 53. Their son John built this house on Fletcher Crescent. It's still up. Both houses are still there, obviously. Um, just down near the car bridge, as you turn on the Fletcher Crescent. This was built in 1858. And the Fletchers also um, allowed for a cemetery. I suspect it was probably Methodist, although it's never been called that. It's the Necropolis Cemetery. Um, there are unknown bodies in it. This is at the high school. If, when you're driving into town, it's right across from the funeral home. And uh, if you look at the back of the parking lot on the east side of Banting, you'll see the monument. William Fletcher and I think a grandson are in there. And um, there were apparently, history says, people used um, markers uh, as door stops and to hold the garage door open and whatever. Um, there are no records that anyone can find of who's there. Um, in 1885, the Union Cemetery opened on the east end of Alliston. Some people were exhumed out of here, but who's lying under there, we do not know. And, we, and there's no, I don't think there's any way of finding out. So the churches. There were all kinds of churches built in Alliston. The first one was in 1863. This is Knox Presbyterian Church. Beautiful little wooden church. Um, for those of you who knew where the Presbyterian Church used to be, um, <coughs> just, I, don't, I don't know if how, how familiar you are with Alliston. The Mill Pond Cafe, the bookstore, Charlie's Donuts, it was, it was just where the little plaza is down from there, um, on the south side of Victoria Street. Uh, they put an addition on, and it, was a, it looked like a pretty little church, I must say, built by the Byers Brothers. The Methodist Church, which is now St. John's United Church, was built in um, 1872 on property donated by the Fletchers. The Fletchers owned the north and south sides of Fletcher Crescent, uh, lot one and a, and, a, and a different designation on the south side, but they owned about 1,200 acres altogether. And we don't know of any rich Fletchers, and the, and the question of the day is, where's the money? <laughs> yeah, I guess. We're just not sure. Um, so that was in 1872. In 1876, the Church of England, the Anglican Church, built a church on Wellington Street. It's still in the same location. And in 1876, the Catholic Church was built just west of the 
high school on Wellington Street, which is the first street south of the main street. Um, there were big happenings in Alliston in the 18, early 1800s and on. About 1871, they already thought the railway was coming through the Grand Trunk, and indeed it did come through uh, in 1877, 78. Um, there's a little park out across from Zayers on King Street, which commemorates it, that the Alliston Historical Society had plaqued. Um, it was, eventually became known as the Hog Special, because some of its last loads were uh, pigs coming out of Collingwood. <laughs> it was also named after an indigenous plant growth along the um, railway. It was called the Virginia Creeper, because that's what it did. <laughs> um, so anyway, with the coming of the railway, they were out in Arlington, which is just east of Rosemont and south of 89, was a large Catholic settlement. They had been encouraged to come in and, and settle Agila. There were two parishes. The priest saw that there was a real potential for growth and suggested that they build a new Catholic church in Alliston, 1876. And um, he built it much larger than the congregation warranted because he figured it would grow. And in fact, it did. And that church was torn down in the uh, 1990s. Everything gets built, and then it gets torn down, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. And so they, they rebuilt over on King Street, where their church is now. Here's the uh, GTR station, the C, uh, which became the GNR, uh, CNR. It was in the southwest portion of town, just east of King, south of Albert, which is the third street back from, I don't know if people know street names, uh, back from Victoria Street to the south. And, of course, the station was taken down, I think, in the, 18, the 1960s, after they, uh, they stopped using the track. I think part of the track north of Alliston was torn up in the 1950s, and then they eventually tore up the rest of it. Uh, the last shipments were, were Christmas trees coming out of um, Thompson's Mill and Somerville Nurseries, which are just in behind the Mary Dairy Queen at King and Victoria. This is a hotel that was uh, located on Wellington Street, one street back, and just up from the, the, um, the Grand Trunk Railway Station, because there were, they actually had two shopping districts in Alliston in the 1870s, 80s. There was Alliston, and then there was West Alliston. And West Alliston was uh, or, uh, Ontario Street, which is the first street this side of the Dairy Queen, going south down to the station, and they actually had stores in a couple of the blocks, and this is the Tecumseh Hotel. And eventually part of it was taken down and, and, and this, uh, the right hand half uh, be became a house for many years. I never knew it as a hotel at all. So that would be, uh, I don't know how old the foal is, but it would have been built in the 1870s. Nice. Now, this is the Gibson Center. I presume everybody is familiar with the Gibson Center. They refer to it as the Mercer Building. And they say that it was built in 1889 by the Mercer Brothers. However, in my research through the mighty Alliston Herald, um, I found out that in fact it was built in 1884 by Mr. Knight and Mr. Wilson, who owned a foundry where the beer store is today. They had a bad fire, lost everything. Um, they asked for a grant from uh, the uh, town of Alliston to help build this. And Mr. Knight was the Reeve at the time, so he had to resign so he could take the money. Anyway, they built it, they opened it in late 1884, and a gentleman who had grown up um, just in the next block reminisced uh, as an older man that he remembers the night it was opened, and I determined he was a nine or ten year old when he, when he was reminisced, when he, what he, of what he was reminiscing. And he said before they opened it as an implement factory, which was the Mercer brother and Knight and Wilson, they uh, decided to have a public ball. And they uh, invited every, uh, all of the townsfolk in for a dance. And he remembers that there was a lighted candle in every window. And I thought, wow, wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. And I told Katie at the museum, our curator, and said, you know, if you ever wanted to do some sort of celebratory uh, function around the, the Gibson Center, uh, wouldn't that be cool? Maybe not real candles these days, but you know, <laughs> some such thing. Uh, the bell is from the old town hall, 
Uh, there was a big deal about getting it up there. They had it refurbished and hung, and I, I hear it dinging and donging every hour. It's great. I used, to, I used to walk to school with that bell dinging and donging. Um, this isn't a very good photo, but it was taken way back in 19, 1893. It's the public school that was built in 1885. It's Alliston Union Public School. Doesn't look anything like it today. Just another photo later on. Lovely tower with a bell on it as well. Um, and behind here is the, is, that is the Gibson Center. And then there was another long, low building that still exists out there. It's been a variety of things. It's been a foundry and a couple of chicken houses and all kinds of things. Um, the Alliston Union Public School determined they're going to close it up. And I, I think the new one opens uh, to the north of town in the fall of uh, 2014. And through the Historical Society, we're trying to get it plaqued properly and uh, so that nobody nobody forgets it. Yeah. And it was a high school as well. The first floor was public, was elementary, and the second floor was a high school. So that's where my mother went, and that's where I went, and that's where my kids went. Now on Fletcher Crescent, there's this house um, just right across from the Fletcher house. And um, I haven't owned it, but underneath it is a foundation of the electric light plant. It's right next to my other house. And this was all owned by my grandfather. My grandfather was the Reeve of Alliston for 15 years, and the mayor for about three. And he was the miller, and um, he, was a, he was also stubborn, and he did a lot of things. Um, the electric light plant, when they first decided to have electricity, they put it in the bottom of the original mill, um, too dusty. So in 1890, they built this house, uh, this uh, electric light plant and uh, generated electricity through a power wheel and, and then eventually steam. I am still taking the cinders out of my yard if I dig down any more than a foot because I think they just took all the cinders out of the big boiler and they put it all over my property and I get huge hunks of cinders to this day. Um, it was um, eventually purchased by Ontario Hydro. My grandfather owned it for a while. Sold it to Ontario Hydro and 1918 for $12,000, then eventually bought this piece of property back, where that little white house is now, and then that's, he reclaimed all the bricks from that to build my house. So I have bricks from the electric light plant, and that's why I tell everybody we're so bright and cheery at our house. Uh, this is the corner of Paris and, and Victoria, which is right across from Charlie's Donuts, again, just up from the pedestrian bridge. It's the building on the southeast corner, uh, Latimer's Carriage Factory. It's still there. Uh, the, the architecture is still the same, except for the, there aren't the verandas at the front. Um, one identifying feature in here is the fact that they feel that uh, the gentleman on the far side is a Mormon. And I'll give you the Mormon history in a minute. Now, I believe someone in this room referred to this as the over-renovated Windsor House, <laughs> which I couldn't agree more with, but however, that is the Windsor House. And, uh, is everyone familiar with this on the main street? You sit right across some Lewis's and, you know. Uh, anyway, um, in 1891, the stables behind the Windsor House, the original one, caught, it was called the Queen's Hotel, caught on fire, and basically all hell broke loose. They lost 30 acres of, um, of uh, housing and streets. There were it started at the Windsor House, it went across the street, it went as far as the Methodist Church, but the Methodists ma maintain that they were saved by the grace of God. Uh, you can see the steeple of the Methodist Church at the top, and this fire stopped uh, on the other side of the street, went across the street, and went down almost as far as the Catholic Church, and down at least one street to the south of the main drag. So there they are, um, per perusing the damages. This is the corner of Centre in Victoria. Uh, the little Chamber of Commerce Monument Works building is on this corner, and over here is the United Church. And so, um, forget what's there now, Joint Tagger, I guess. This is the Bank of Hamilton, big impressive building, and that's looking west. In a very dismal day in the history of Alliston, and this is in behind the stores on the south side. The um, uh, the rights there that's written on on the first is on Wellington Street, First Street back. 
So they eventually rebuilt, but they what, just... What year was that? 1891. May the 5th, I think, 1891. They even sent a train down from Collingwood with um, some fire equipment to see if they could st stem the tide, but it basically uh, had to run itself out. So then they decided that they needed to have a better water protection, better fire protection, so they needed to get a water system in. So they uh, built the, uh, they had this erected in 1892, wooden, and it looks a lot different than the one there today, right beside the hospital. Now, you can't see this photo very well, we need to get it touched up, but I haven't got around to that yet. Um, so I'm just going to point out a couple of things. Presbyterian Church, Mill Pond, Dam, Mill, and then this is the Gibson Center back in here, and the high school's down in there, and then the rest is just looking southeast. We assume the photo was taken sometime between 1892 and 1900 because the water tower was there. So you could take a photograph if you could get up high enough. And uh, there's a windmill that went up in 1900 and it's not in the photo, so it's sometime in the 1890s. Do you think this was taken from the water tower? Yeah, I would suspect. That, that's the, because that's the highest point at that point. And, um, how they how they got up there, I don't know. Anyway, that that's by guess and by golly, but sort of using common sense, I guess. Um, they decided they needed a town hall, so after the fire, they brick a t uh, built a brick town hall that used to have a tower, uh, and it was taken down in 1868. They just felt that if you even tackled any kind of renovations, it was liable to implode upon itself, and it's located where the municipal office is today in Alliston. Uh, oh, um, the town hall also had the second story, which was the opera house, which is similar to, I, want, I believe, the one in Beaton. Yeah. It had a stage. Uh, my mother was a concert pianist. Her, one of her first jobs was playing uh, piano for the silent movies. Nice. So there's the stage, and the chandeliers that were hanging there, I believe there were six, um, one, there was only one left. It uh, had some circuitous route down to the um, Agricultural Museum, the Hydro Museum, the Na uh, National Archives, and by, by proving it belonged here, it now hangs in the museum at, uh, in the park, at the Museum on the Boy. Oh, nice. nice. So, a little bit of history has come back. I don't, I don't know who the man is on the stage, by the way. This is a post office building. It was located where the Bank of Montreal is now, at the corner of the, at the northwest corner of the main intersection. It was, this one was built in 1892, and it eventually became the Bell Telephone Exchange. And then they decided they didn't need it, and down she went. This is the Windsor House as it should appear. <laughs> this would have been how it looked, well, based on the cars. What's that, 50s? Mm -hmm. Um, but that's the way I always remember it, and um, so when it got renovated, it really got renovated. However, it is a, a pretty building. Um, this is, there's, there's the town hall in the background. This is the main street taken from a roof someplace, and if you are at the post office or around there, even across from the Windsor House, those three arches in the brickwork on the second story are still there. In all those buildings, there has been one fire, um, but both, most of those buildings are still there, although the second stories, are, the facades are quite often changed, unfortunately. Yeah. This is the main street, probably about 1900, and the main building here is the Dominion Hotel, which has had a variety of restaurant names and all the rest of it. It's just down from the Windsor House and across the street to the west. Um, it was built in 1881, and it was to the west of the fire, so those buildings are intact. Now, this photograph was taken from the Latimer building that I showed you at the corner of Paris and Victoria, and there's all kinds of neat things in it. It's looking to the west and the north. You can, you can barely see, right up here is the spire to the Presbyterian Church. Presbyterian Church, the wooden one. Um, down here is the Grant House where Margaret was born. 
this is the original school. Became it was um, it was located just north of Victoria Street at Boyne Street, or the second concession, or the Scotch Line, whatever you want to say. And it was moved here by Captain McLaren, who made carriages, and he used it as a showroom. However, here's the here's an intrigue, and this is the mill pond out here, pump house to pump water, and this building here, do any of you remember McVitie's implement shop, uh, Wilton's storage house for his carpet? It's right across from the Presbyterian Church, or that plaza that's there now. It always was in view of my house from the time I lived in the, on Fletcher Crescent from 47 on. Um, it is originally the Mormon Church. And when I was doing the history of the Mormon Church, I discovered that it was just invented in 1833. And by 1840, there were missionaries wandering around in the wilds of Essa Township, got some converts, um, then they moved into Alliston, and in 1881, there was a Mormon Church in Alliston. So there was Presbyterian, Anglican, Methodist, Roman Catholic, and Mormon. And that's, the history's been totally lost. Um, it was down just west of uh, King Street from um, Domino's Pizza, uh, the mill, the, the elevator that's still there on the old CNR tracks. I don't know if you're familiar at Albert Street. It's just in from King, anyway. It was there for 10 years, and then the congregation disbanded. And according to what I've read, they either joined the Presbyterian Church or went to Utah. So the, a, a gentleman, a grocer in town on Main Street bought it and moved it up to Main Street. Eventually got all covered over. Um, they decided to tear it down in the mid-1990s. Nobody wanted it and as they uncovered it and unsheathed it, the, the um, church windows were all there. They found an engraving of April 1881 Nobody was interested, down she went. So the Mormon church is gone. How am I doing for time? Okay, 10 minutes? Okay. Uh, this is Main Street, and this is how they celebrated. They would get, make these big boughs out of pine branches, and they'd have them three or four uh, um, spaced out along Main Street. This is the Dominion Hotel that they happen to be in front of here. But it was a big deal. They had them at the uh, down at King Street and down maybe closer to where the high school is now, and then spread around. Now, two features here. Dominion Hotel. This is an archway. God forbid we keep it. It's still there, but it's been all covered over for all the different restaurants that end up in the this Winchester Arms, it's been Molly Hooley's, I don't know. It's just it's always some other restaurant. I don't think it's open right now. But this was the alleyway where you could take your car horse and carriage back to the stables. Yeah. And I, would, I mean, would, even if you just kept an arch and set, but anyway, maybe someday we'll uncover it. Also, down here is the Home Bank of Canada. And it came into town in about 1906, if I recall, and then it was taken over by another bank, and I didn't look up who it was. Um, it's now the clothesline which is the used clothing that used to be run by Contact, and, or I think it still is. Their toy box, <laughs> which is, this is the inside of the store, where they put all their toys, is the old bank vault. Oh, yes. <laughs> and somebody called me three or four years ago, what do you know about this building? I said, I don't know anything. She said, well, I'm sure this is the bank vault. Well, it looks like no bomb would take it apart, so I guess it was the bank vault. So anyway, if you're in the clothesline, you can see the Home Bank of Canada bank vault. This is referred to as the castle. I don't know if any of you recall it. It was to the east of the high school before the last edition. It was originally built by George Fletcher, son of the founder, back about, we think, around 1890, added to by a gentleman named T.M. Brown, who had all kinds of money. And it was unfortunately torn down, I think it was 1968, when they had to enlarge the high school. And um, there was great lamentation, if I remember. I wasn't around at the time. Well, I was around. I just wasn't living here. Um, now, arenas. As you know, arenas are very important. 
Um, I, I, I would read that our first arena was a, built around 1885, and then, then this was a, supposedly the second arena, and then I got reading in 1886 in a paper that we, we had the finest roller skating rink north of Toronto. And it was east, if you locate yourself at the beer store, and across the road is now a small plaza with apartments, but it was down in there someplace. And um, the fellows that made it were carpenters, so it's, it, I'm sure it was, this was the rink that people thought was an ice rink. And it burned in the fire, and it was never rebuilt. But roller skating, I did, I did, I did the uh, history of roller skating, and it came into vogue in Ontario in about 1883. And it was huge, and it was all the rage. So we had lots of trees, we had lots of carpenters, we had a sawmill, and so I guess these fellows decided to put up a roller skating rink. Anyway, this is not the second, the second ice rink. This is the first ice rink, because up until then they would have used the mill pond. It was fine, you know, you just scrape it off and it freezes and you're all set to go. So this was built in about 1906, and it collapsed in 1947. And the people that were at a hockey game the night before it collapsed from weight of snow could hear it creaking and doing all kinds of things, and nobody was hurt, very luckily. Now, uh, we're going to go back now to the early 1900s, and the CPR was going to bring a line up out of Toronto, and the GTR came up through Beaton, Alamel, and then off up to Alliston. They'd hoped it was going to go to Rosemont, uh, didn't. So Rosemont died, and everybody basically moved down the hill, from what I can gather. Keenansville died, Valley Croy bit the dust. I mean, all these places along uh, no longer grew. Um, then they heard about the CPR, and it was going to be direct access to the uh, West Coast. So um, the town fathers decided it might be worth a little negotiation. It's called Money Talks. Uh, offered $8,000, and if you'll notice, the CPR comes up through Beaton, Alamel, and then it makes this pronounced turn up through Alliston, and as soon as it crosses Victoria Street, as you cross those tracks and look north, it makes a severe turn back the other way. Mm -hmm. Nicholson died, because they thought that's where it was going to go through, and then it eventually went back to the route that they had planned. So the CPR came in, I think it was 1907, there's some... Uh, close enough, anyway. Um, the station, you may know, is down on the 6th line, Jim Brown's uh, house. Jim Brown on the 6th, just north of Tottenham, is that right? The 5th, the 5th yeah. yeah. line. Okay, thank you. Um, he moved it, I think it was in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. And he lives in the CPR station from Alist. Oh, okay. Anyway, that's the CPR, and of course, then the population expanded again because there was that much more trade going on. That's looking north. This is just another shot of it, and there's the stagecoach. Wow, it's just like Roy Rogers, I always say. Yeah. There's the stage. The Alliston Monument Works, um, which now is the Chamber of Commerce and also the Alliston Downtown Improvement Association office was built in 1910 by Joseph Parrott. His daughter, Mary D.K. Harvey, a famous Tecumsehan, is that right, or Betonian? And um, because he, were, he was with the um, Central County Board of Education. Anyway, this is built in 1910. My uncle happened to own it from 1927 until he died in 1993. He was the oldest monumentalist in North America, still going to work. Um, you can't say that he actually was doing anything, but he was going to work. Um, and he, he died um, a week before his 94th birthday. And up in the upstairs of this, I forgot about this, there was a um, secret gun club. Oh, yes. And I have signs from it. I have all the spent shells from a short 22. Um, I have beer caps and cigarette packages under the sign, absolutely no drinking or smoking. Um, and apparently, um, there was a staircase in that building originally, and uh, when I, I, I had to sell it because I was his executrix. When I sold the, beating, uh, the, the, the building, 
I sold it to a gentleman whose grandfather was from a monument company in Toronto, in Weston. Uh, I can't remember the name of it right now. Anyway, he remembered Uncle Woman as, uh, as a kid, he remembered Uncle Woman coming down to pick up stone. And um, a lady came up to me, and she saw the, all the information on the secret gun club, and she said, so that's why my husband always came to the Monument Works. I couldn't figure out why they spent so much time there. And even Sandy Ellis, the um, author and the former game warden, they had targets and they signed them, and I've got his signature on one of the targets. So I think it was a fairly active little place up there, but apparently short 22s don't make any noise. You can refute that if you like, yes. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. There used to be a brick factory right across the street from that building. And it was torn down maybe oh. in the 70s. Casket factory. Yes. The, the underground furniture company. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was built as a silver plating um, factory by T.M. Brown, who owned the, um, the castle. And um, they needed so much water, then they got in a dispute that they left town. And then it was um, two shoe companies came in. And then it made aspirins for a while. And then Mr. Derbyshire bought it, I think, in 1938, and made caskets there. And when he retired, um, it sat empty. There was a, a, a movement afoot to try to save it. Um, maybe put in a few serious little shops in the main floor or whatever. Apparently the second floor has one foot depth um, timbers because they had these caskets that they were making and the weight of them. And um, nobody wanted the building and they tore it down. Okay. Another one, gone kaput. So it's very handy, you know, you had the monument works, then you had the casket factories, and then the funeral director was just down the street, you know, and it was, a, they were all just, all, so anyway, that's what happened to the casket factory. So that was built after the fire, was it? Yes, it was. Um, before there was the Temperance Hotel, owned by George Fletcher. And um, they were staunch teetotalers and uh, the whole bit. So he um, put up a hotel, but he didn't want to manage it, so he had someone else doing it. But uh, there's a great photo, but I don't, it's just, um, it's just sketched. And he had double windows, long vertical windows. And up the middle was a different color of brickwork, and then it broadened out over each uh, window, and it looked like a T. Oh. And that was the Temperance Hotel. So you knew <laughs> darn well. You're only sleeping and eating. There's no drinking. Uh, and then it burned in the fire, and then that's when the silver plating, that's when that old, that old factory went up. But anyway, it's too bad. It was a gorgeous old building. And it would have made gr a great something, I'm sure. Anyway, no one bites the dust. Fortunately, they decided to save the Monument Works building. My no, uncle, after, he would never have dreamt that the building would still be up. And they spent a lot of money. They got grant money and they raised the floor and they put in a basement. And he never had hot water and he only had cold water and <laughs> emptied into the basement. The toilet, we think, was connected to something. We can only hope. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, so anyway, it stays on the corner, and there's all kinds of people come in and say, oh, isn't this great, this is good. And so anyway, at least some, some good news. Uh, this is the museum now. It was built in 1914 as the Agricultural Fair, Fair Hall. And uh, it started off with a dirt floor. The soldiers uh, marched in there and trained uh, during First World War. Um, in 1936, the Lions Club, um, 36 or 37, the Lions Club had just formed, decided to put a wooden floor in, which is the floor that still exists in there today. And um, it was a dance hall. Guy Lombardo was here one night. Um, one of the stories I have is that a woman said, oh, you know, it was, uh, it was going to the fair. Uh, if we were going to the fair, it was a big deal. And of course, the fair is only two days a year. And I, I, it wasn't really used that much before that, I don't think. Uh, other than that, I mean, other than these dances. But she said, we'd always buy a new coat for the fair. Now, you didn't get one every year. But if you did, that's when you broke it out. <laughs> So anyway, so it looks the building looks great now. They, you know, they fixed up the inside and raised it, and that's where the chandelier is from the town hall. 
Um, this is the, I, I don't have a good photograph of the um, Presbyterian Church. This was built in 1915. They tore down the wooden one, the pretty little wooden one, built this, and uh, they already had the Mansop, which was a huge building. It was built in 1877, I think, uh, just after the original church, but uh, shortly thereafter. And this was the fire. I don't know if anyone was around for the horrible fire the last um, Saturday uh, in January of... 1995, I think it was, 95 or 96, and just a horrible fire. Um, the next night, there was um, the shed for the United Church, which stored all the wood for Mr. Derbyshire at the casket factory, burned to the ground. So within one weekend, it was a, it was terrible, just a terrible, terrible memory. It was looked awful. This is fashioned after the Presbyterian Church in Coldwater. And if you ever go to Coldwater, dig around in one of the back streets and you will see a semblance of this Presbyterian Church. This is the town square at Victorian Church, which is the, 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 main, the main intersection. This is celebrating the end of World War I. Um, they hastily built a platform and apparently the streets were maybe oiled, but they weren't paved but they had paved the whole square in cement, and that's where they did their celebrations. Alliston Creamery, still in existence. I think it makes a million pounds of butter a year or something, a little more than they did in 1919. It's uh, just behind the main street. Um, the Memorial Alliston uh, Memorial Library was built, officially opened in 1924 by Dr. Fred Banting. He, wasn't, he hasn't been knighted at that point. Uh, the Women's Institute became very well known for their efforts in building this hotel, or, or library, I mean, hotel. Um, and so it's still there, of course, the, the original building is gone, but they kept the site. In uh, 1926, the um, Anglicans decided to rebuild their church. Um, they needed some building materials. At the same time, the Presbyterians were building a second church because there had just been an amalgamation and the, and the breakaway group decided to build their own church. The Elm Grove Methodist Church had, was being sold because they didn't need it anymore because they'd become united. So the Presbyterians bought the Methodist Church, took it all down, moved it into Alliston, decided not to use it, sold it to the Anglicans who could use the refinished bread, the reclaimed bricks because they were going to stock it, they didn't care what they looked like. So when you go to the Anglican Church, you're sitting in bricks, bought from the Presbyterians, bought from the Methodists. So. This is the, pres the second Presbyterian Church on Wellington Street, just behind the old IGA. It's now a daycare center. It became a Pentecostal Church, and then the daycare center. Um, this is the Mill Pond, and um, Hunter's Corners, Hunter's Garage, Dairy Queen, um, if you're on the north side of the street, just one property in, there was a Mr. Alderson whose property came down to the water. and Everybody had docks and rowboats and canoes and whatever. He decided to create a beach, Alderson's Beach, in 1926. This was what it looked like. And he had willow trees so he could make all kinds of loopy-doopy thingies. And uh, I don't know how long it was there, probably five or six years. That winter, he decided to build a toboggan slide. And apparently they were all in vogue. They had toboggan runs at High Park in Toronto. Uh, Robertson Davies writes about them elsewhere. And they had huge toboggans. I, I gather they held up to 10 people. And so he built this, <laughs> he built this toboggan slide. And I, whether it's, I don't think that slide's pretty wild there. But you actually had to climb stairs, get on the toboggan, and then you just rip down the hill. It's a fairly good hill anyway. And then, of course, the pond would be frozen, and they'd go right across the mill pond. And they went so fast that they had to put a whole bunch of pine boughs at the bottom of the hill where they play baseball now. So they banged the side. And if you did it right, um, the GTR ran through town at an angle, through the back of um, way behind the Dairy Queen, and across the river and up into um, Everett. Um, and they said if you could do it and get your toboggan turned to the bottom of the hill, they could go all uh, right up through to the bridge that crossed over for the GTR. So the, um, and then some, some lady broke her leg, no more toboggan. Kaput. Yeah. Hunter's Corner, 
um, which is now the vacant corner. They're looking at a gas station and a car wash. Um, Hunters, uh, when they enlarged the building at Hunter's Hall on the second story, all kinds of dances, all kinds of people met other people, all kinds of marriages came out of that hall. Uh, the soldiers came down on a Saturday night. Hunter's Hall was the place to swing out, apparently. Um, this is the um, original Stevenson Memorial Hospital, uh, funded by T.P. Loblaw of Loblaw Groceries. Grew up, I presume, I don't presume you know a bit of the story, at Stevenson Farms. Well, close to Stevenson Farms, which is now the bed and breakfast on the baseboard and road. Um, after he'd earned his millions, he wanted to do something for his town. He just loved Alliston and decided for $100,000 they would, could put up a hospital, 50 to build, 50 to invest, so that they would never have to go to the government for money. Well, that didn't pan out too well. But uh, this was opened, officially opened in 1928. It was a 30-bed cottage hospital. And apparently when you stood on the other side of the mill pond, people used to call it the ship. Because uh, at night, it would be all lighted and you had the stacks up and then you'd see the reflection in the water. It would be really cool. The nurse's residence, which is still there today, was built uh, 10 years later in 1938. Oh, just a minute, sorry. Um, if you look at it today, those trees out front are mighty, mighty tall. Um, this is the, um, is the east end of the mill pond, and um, this, is, uh, this is the dam right here. Um, my grandfather built that double veranda house, which is still there today, it's just across the line, in 1912. And um, then he built this greenhouse, because he now owned the property in the electric light plant, and you could heat it uh, by all the heat that was produced with the steam boiler. So he built the greenhouse, and I don't know when they took it down, I think it was the mid-40s. But to this day, I can guarantee you, when I dig in my garden, I will get at least three or four pieces of glass over the spot. I've got a whole pile sitting at my house I've taken out in the last two years. So I've got cinders and I've got glass. Um, the, uh, this thing here is called a swimming crib. It was invented by my grandfather. He thought that there should be a safer place for the children to swim. So he designed this thing, he made a frame, and he covered it all in chicken wire, and then he brought it up higher at one end than the other, and then he'd push it down into the mud so that the chicken frame, the chicken wire would sort of stick out at an even, this is a little different here, but sort of at an even level. And I talked to someone the other day, she said, I can remember swimming in that, I hated it, because they walked on chicken wire. Oh. But there were all kinds of kids learned how to swim in the swimming crib, and I have an article that the Globe and Mail or somebody in the Telegram wrote about Reeve Cunningham and his swimming crib. So I guess you're famous for all kinds of things. Uh, Main Street, about 1940. This is the uh, Alliston School as it uh, changed its um, profile before it became totally different. And I'll end my presentation with a building that everybody always asks about. Hmm. It's on Highway 89. Oh, yeah. It's uh, just up from the Nicholson Dam. And it is the wool, wool storage house, the, or a wool storage building for the Upton Woolen Mill, which was back behind on the river. And the house next door to it is where the Uptons lived. And they opened their mill, I think, way back in the late 1880s. So I think that's the end, folks, and I'm probably over my time anyway. Yes, that's it. So that's it. Yes? Uh, what is, what's happening with that woolen storage mill? Is it just demolition by neglect or what? I have no idea. You know, it's sat there for years. I don't know whether they, there's still an Upton relative in the, um, in the house next to it. Um, see the house right there? Yeah. I, I have no idea. I don't know if they know an Essa Historical Society uh, because it's in Essa Township. But it's just that it's so predominant, and everybody says, oh, what's that building? So that's what it is. Just for storage. He had a store in Alliston, and he sold blankets to Eaton's.
He had a hu he was hugely successful apparently, and his, his successor was McMulkin. But the Upton uh, woolen mill was um, a huge operation. Is it gone now? The woolen mill is the, the building. I, I just took that yesterday. Well, it's not going to be there for long. <laughs> Uh, oh yes, yes, and there's other buildings in Nicholston. My great great grandfather was granted the. If you're coming uh, along time. through the Nottawasaga Inn on, uh, on the Have south, and the Matthews House is on the north, that farm uh, was granted to my great great grandfather in 1840 for his role, uh, for his help uh, with the government in the rebellion of 1837. <laughs> and if you go down across the bridge, you get Kindler's Road. Well, it shouldn't have a D in it, because I'm named after Caroline Kindler. And my great-grandfather farmed that farm there, and then sold it to Mackenzie's, who sold it to Leach, because it's now C.W. Leach Road along there. But, um, so my, my, both my great-grandparents started to, started over there. Um, so, but other than that, I don't know too much more about uh, Nicholson history and, and what's going to happen. Okay. All right, thank you.